Hey guys, ever wondered where Iran's missile power actually started? Today we are telling the story of a man with vision. He built a superpower from absolutely nothing but pure determination. Meet Hassan Tehrani Mogadam, the genius behind the huge firewall. Hassan was just a kid from the poor southern districts. During the revolution days, he dreamed of big, impossible things. Believe it or not, he made hand grenades using water pipes. That showed early on that his mind worked very differently. When the war started, Hassan was only 21 years old. He went to the front and saw his friends under fire. Iran didn't even have proper artillery to fight back effectively. This severe shortage made Hassan angry and incredibly motivated to act. He didn't cry about it, he fixed captured Iraqi cannons. With scrap metal, he organized the guard's first artillery unit ever. He showed everyone that management means building everything from zero resources. But there was still a bigger, scarier problem looming ahead. Saddam was bombing cities and Iran had no defense shields. People shouted missile for missile in streets, but warehouses were empty. Hassan realized artillery wasn't enough. He needed a much stronger weapon. This was the start of a mission impossible for his team. In 83, they gave him command of a missile unit. The joke was there were no missiles to actually command. He had 13 men and a world of hope inside. No one believed this tiny group could stop a global army. Hassan took his guys to Syria for a crash course. In three months, they learned what usually takes years to master. Syrian officers were shocked, asking who are these genius guys? This trip began the journey of specialized missile learning for Iran. Upon returning, they fired the first Scud at Kirkuk refinery. That explosion broke the silence and brought hope back to hearts. Iraq was confused how Iran could strike such a precise blow. It meant the war equation had finally changed in our favor. The Libyan experts betrayed them and took key missile parts away. They thought Iran was finished, but Hassan refused to give up. He and his team fixed the missiles in just two months. This was the first spark of self-reliance in the industry. Hassan said, we can't wait to buy weapons, we must build. Amidst war and sanctions, they built the short-range Naziat rocket. This was the first step toward a fully Iranian-made weapon system. It proved we could stand on our own feet during war. The war ended, but Hassan knew threats remained against the country. Many said, we don't need missiles, but he insisted on continuing. He believed for peace, you must be strong to deter attacks. So he kickstarted research projects with serious speed and focus. Why missiles? Because the Air Force was sanctioned and aging fast. Missiles were the best option to threaten deep into enemy territory. This was a strategic choice to cover weaknesses with smart moves. Hassan understood this reality long before other military commanders did. The world wouldn't sell weapons, wanting Iran to remain weak forever. Tehrani Mogadam wanted to break this chain of dependency for good. By building missiles, he guaranteed Iran's political and military independence. That is national pride that money simply cannot buy today. The 90s brought the masterpiece of that era, the Shahab III. Its range hit 1,300 kilometers, putting huge threats under its shadow. This missile changed regional equations in Iran's favor for once and for all. Hassan worked night and day to make it precise and perfect. But Hassan wasn't satisfied. He moved to solid fuel technology. Solid fuel means the missile is ready. The enemy can't react. This tech leap multiplied the reaction speed of our forces instantly an achievement that only advanced countries possessed, and we did not. The result was Fateh 110, a pinpoint accurate missile, truly amazing. It wasn't about hitting cities, it was about hitting specific buildings. This high accuracy scared the enemy and made them think twice. Fateh showed that Iranians really know precision engineering very well. Then came Sijil, 
a two-stage beast with 2,000 kilometers range. This missile was a nightmare for any aggressor planning an attack. Its speed was incredibly high. No shield could stop it easily. Sigil was the peak of Hassan's art and defense industry. Hassan didn't just build missiles, he designed underground missile cities too. Places where weapons stay hidden from enemy spy satellites above. These silos guaranteed our power remained safe and ready to fire. A smart move that made security 100% guaranteed. He wasn't just an engineer, he was a leader of hearts. He told youth, only weak humans work within their limited resources. This spirit raised hundreds of students just like him to build. He left a new culture in military management forever behind. They built Kayam, which had no fins, using native tech. Every day a new idea, every day a new creative design. Hassan was tireless, always looking for ways to get even better. He proved sanctions are just a silly word on paper. In 2011, while working on a top secret project, he left us. A massive explosion at Mudara's base took Hassan to the sky. He was striving for our security until the very last moment. The man who dreamed of ending threats died a martyr's death. Hassan left, but his path continued with Koram Sharam and Imad missiles. His students didn't let the flag fall and moved forward powerfully. Today, if we have the Fatah hypersonic missiles, we owe his foundation. He is alive because his impact flows in Iran's security. Now, Iran is the region's top missile power, the world knows. No one dares to look at this land with aggression anymore. Friends of Iran became hopeful, and enemies remained disappointed and ashamed. This security we have now did not come for free, guys. Hassan Tehrani Mogadam was the symbol of willpower in hard times, a man who started with water pipes and reached space tech. His life story teaches us that dead ends do not exist. He was truly the father of Iran's missiles and our security. Thanks for staying with me until the end of this video. If you are proud of your country's real heroes, hit like. Comment below, what do you think was Mogadam's biggest legacy? Until the next video and another cool story, take care.